Hello, Loot Crate. Well, we're back. It's the Top 5 Show. I'm Christian. And I am Mark. Christian, this weekend in theaters, you have Minions, you have The Gallows, but you also have Comic-Con in San Diego, the biggest convention in the world, at least according to people who love comic books. is taking place. We're both going to be on site, so why not talk about comic book movies? Makes sense, because just look over the last 10 years what comic book movies have done for mm -hmm. the movie industry. So, like Mark said, because of Comic-Con, here are the Top 5 comic book movies of all time. Well, there's going to be movies on here that maybe were more influential as far as the grand scheme of comic book films in general, yeah. but the greatest franchise we have running is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and what really helped kick that off? Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, and a superhero that everybody was aware of but wasn't necessarily as popular as your Batmans, your Supermans, your Spider-Mans. Boy, is that world different now. This movie could have been a disaster. Right. I mean, you look at Jon Favreau, who had had some... Coming yeah, off Elf. Elf, right, yeah. but you're like, okay, this guy's going to do a superhero movie. Robert Downey Jr. Had, who had his fair share of problems, although it fit into the Tony Stark character, but like you said, not a lot of people knew who this was. And boy, did it deliver. It's one of my favorite standalone films, too. And now when you look back on it, you see it through the eyes of everything it was setting up. But yeah. when I saw it in the theater, I wasn't thinking about, oh, that's going to tie into Thor. Then that's going to be Captain America. Then we're going to get the Avengers. I was just thinking, this movie is so much fun to watch. The action's great. The comedy's on point. Fantastic comic book yeah. flick. Now, number four is one that is near and dear to both our hearts here. Mm -hmm. And you t I, I, some would argue that this is the one that really started the superhero craze because it showed that it could actually happen and look real, and that, of course, is Superman the Movie, which came out in 1978. 1978, directed by Richard Donner and starring Christopher Reeve, who to this day is probably most people's favorite Superman. I know he's ours, both of ours? Yeah. Favorite Superman? So. Yeah. It, it, it is the reason why any of these other movies are on our list in the first place, and the John Williams score oh, is something epic. you'll still hear in every basketball arena you enter. Now, you have to realize that no one had really made the comic book movies at all. There was nothing happening. There was no comic book movies. They're just like t cheesy TV shows, more or less, before yeah. until you got to 1970. Right. I mean, you had Star Wars in 77, which yes. helped further it along. It's responsible for everything good. Yes, um, but as Superman, how they were going to make it, the, the tagline was, "You will believe a man can fly," and you did because of the way that it was all. It was really Richard Donner and the way that he put this together. He shot both one mm -hmm. and two together and was kicked off the second movie, which is a dopey movie. But when you watch Superman 2, the, the Richard Donner cut, you're yeah. like, man, this is th th that might even be a better film, but you gotta give the nod to Superman the movie, because yes. of everything, it kicked off. For what that movie did, and even though it took a little bit longer, you didn't get to Tim Burton's Batman a little later on, before right. you got another big superhero movie, this was the one that said, okay, wait, superhero movies could work. That's right, they, they could work on, on, the, on the big spectacle scale. Now, a movie that I think really furthered comic book flicks as far as being a great story, and actually just a great cinematic experience, as opposed to just a fun comic comic book movie was X2, X-Men, United, Wolverine, getting a show of the claws. Uh, this is the first time you saw Berserker Wolverine as well, right. too, in the kitchen there. But I think that what X-Men did in 2000 was what Superman did. It was, it and was Batman to, did in 89. It was yeah, it was, a, it was to bring it back, and we're still kind of in that wave. There were, a few, there were three or four different waves, and this was the third wave. But X2 was the sequel to a very successful movie by Brian Singer, and it had the most feel of X-Men, because there was a couple things in the first one that was a little wonky, and they were tied up here. Mm -hmm. You got to see, it, it was like a darker feel, but it did focus on Wolverine's backstory a bit more. That's right, and then X-Men 3 came out, and then we had to wipe everything off the face of the earth, yeah. and then thank God Days of Future Past did that, which still, like, I, I caught Days of Future Past the other day, and I'm like, this, this might be my favorite X-Men movie, it's but really X2. Good way the hell up there. X2 is really good, so that's why it's at number three. Now, number two, The Avengers. Yeah! Now, as far as what... Some could argue that there are other movies that are not on this list that maybe are, are better quality film as far as story goes, but yeah. as far as a comic book movie... Come on, it's The Avengers. It's, so I'm saying, it's like, well, you, everyone, if you're a comic book fan, has to remember that feeling you got, and you're like, holy crap, you actually have Iron Man fighting Captain America fighting Thor, and now they're fighting everybody, and that's the actual Hulk. I mean, it's pretty hard. It was pretty hard not to have it at number one, but just that right. it's got to be up that high, because as a comic book movie in general, it delivers. You look at, you look at the X-Men, and they started out as a pack, and so it, then maybe they get their individual standalone movies, like what Wolverine tries to do, or somebody like that, but then you have your Superman, and you have your Batman, but think about how hard it is to pull off a great comic book film, like an Iron Man. Now think about how hard it is to do that five or six different times, and have all them unite in yeah. one movie and make that movie as enjoyable as the sum of its parts. It's a nearly impossible task, but Joss Whedon and Marvel managed to pull it off brilliantly. But 
not <laughs> as brilliant as number one. Yeah. The Dark Knight. Uh, it is, it's the best comic book movie of all time. It really is. It, it's you, for you talk about a movie that when you see the Joker and you're like, well, how's he going to compare to Jack Nicholson? No offense, but no one puts Jack Nicholson as number one anymore. It's all about Heath Ledger right, and the way right. that he portrayed him. That opening scene is almost like a scene out of Michael Mann's Heat, and it sets you up. <laughs> yeah. And the way that it is shot, and coming off the successful Batman Begins, it, 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 it's the second half, and one of the best second movies of any trilogy, I think, next to Empire Strikes Back. That's right. Watching Batman and Joker face off in match wits, and you just get such a dark, gritty, realistic vibe that was the, built on the promise of Batman Begins. Now, I would argue that Batman in 1989 might have been the more important Batman film as far as everything that came out after it, but The Dark Knight is the best film based on comic book lore I think you could possibly get. Here's why I'm going to say you're wrong. Oh, man. I'm going to get enough of this it's at Comic Con this weekend. But, but here's what I'll say why I, I'm going to disagree with that is because what Nolan did with The Dark Knight, what, and people still think that it was Jip for not getting nominated for an Oscar. As was, it was. What that movie did, as far as everyone now began to take comic book movies more serious because of the way that he, he didn't treat it as just some schlocky Joel Shoemaker movie. Mm, and when you saw... And no when, nipples. And when you saw... Even, even Batman, uh, Tim Burton's Batman, some of the stuff with the dancing and the prints and everything, it, it didn't... It felt... It was dated and it was great for its time. But there was something... It was... Tr Nolan treated this movie like an actual film, like it actually could happen. And because of it, you start to see a little bit more of it and it's transcendent. I think more people take superhero movies in general seriously because of The Dark Knight. Look, I'm just glad that you didn't want to put Flash Gordon in the top five, but oh, there are tons and tons of honorable mentions. I mean, you even look at Blade. stuff this summer, like Blade was one of those two ones too. That's like, oh, we should start making comic book films mm -hmm. again. All the Marvel standalone movies, I think, are pretty bar none. Winter well Soldier was hard not to put in here. But yeah, that, that, that one's fantastic. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, come on, even stuff that's coming out later yeah. this summer, like Ant Man, maybe Fantastic Four hits mm -hmm. there. Definitely comment and let us know what do you guys think we left off the list. There's a lot in there. So, like Mark said, comment, let us know which thing. What are your favorite comic book movies? movies of all time. If you're at Comic-Con, come say what's up. Also, make sure you check out Loot Crate, get the subscription, do the hits, the hats, all that stuff. That's right. That's Christian. I'm Mark, and we'll see you guys in San Diego. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest updates for all the goings-on at Comic-Con. Whee!